A bed of sand and a patch of mud is all that remains in the Capotessa Dam. It once provided the water, vital for crops and livestock in this remote part of Zimbabwe. This year, there was very little rain and the river is dry. We were not able to work in the garden. The prolonged drought, linked to the El Nino phenomenon and climate change, has cut cereal production by more than 75 percent and left at least 7.6 million people in need of humanitarian aid. That's almost half of the population. <laughs> Children under the age of five, pregnant women and new mothers are most affected. We've recorded an increase in terms of cases of malnutrition uh, over the last uh, three months. They've increased around, from around, uh, by around 20 percent uh, in the district. In May, President Emerson and Mangagwa declared a state of disaster. He said Zimbabwe needed at least $2 billion to respond to the drought. Early July, they received an insurance payout of over $16 million from the African Risk Capacity Group, designed to help African Union member states plan, prepare and better respond to extreme weather events. The payout is complemented by payouts to our AAC replica partners amounting to 6.1 million US dollars to the WFP and 8.9 million US dollars to Start Network. Zimbabwe will therefore receive a total of 31.8 million US dollars from this payout. International organizations are also trying to raise money for Zimbabwe. The UN launched a $430 million donation campaign in early June. So far, they say they haven't received any external contributions.